All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back into another video. It has been a while since I've done a video that it's, well, related to, you know, gameplay and such that doesn't necessarily come from a stream. And I feel like these videos are much better for me to engage with you guys. So, and since I'm speaking of stream, if you ever want to catch me live, Creepers YT on Twitch should be in the description, this little link tree thing. It'll have all my stuff in there. Feel free to go and check it out drop a follow on my twitch so you know when i'm going live if not just hop on my discord i'll also have notifications when i go live on my channel since i don't really have a schedule so what is video what is the video of today all about well that would be lilith lilith has been out for a bit of time now and one thing that i have noticed is that a lot of people don't play her in fact one of the thing one of the things that i've noticed a lot is that the people who do play her end up either being, you know, person who has played a lot of Lilith and therefore knows a bit how to play her, or they're just trash at Lilith. Yes, I'm looking at some of you guys already. Don't worry though, I'm not judging. I understand that Lilith might be complicated. In fact, she requires a lot of work to actually work properly. So, instead of doing a full tutorial, I'm going to do this new series of videos. And one thing that I'm going to request from you guys is that you go down to the comments below and tell me which champion would you love to see me doing this that I'm doing here today. And the itinerary or the sort of like, you know, the book with the chapters for this video would be the following. First, we're going to talk a little bit of who, who Lilith is, because I also know that you guys like lore, and I like to talk about lore as well. Second of all, I'm going to jump in shooting range really quick, just show you a couple little tips and tricks. And third of all, we'll jump into a TDM or an onslaught, depending on how much left time, time we got left. Sorry about my English. Uh, and probably showed you how some of these things actually work in proper gameplay. Also, I do advise you to please... Uh, adapt the loadouts to whatever the hell you prefer and train with her a bit before you go into competitive with her okay it would save so much trouble it would actually make a lot of people not lose their minds so who is Lilith if you go into the last tab you'll have this little story here but in conclusion Lilith was somebody who was kind of a close friend to Leon uh, well she kind of is on the magistrate side and she would work together with Leon, and Leon would pay her with certain things, including some lands uh, which she owned now. And so you could almost call her, you know, the, the queen of that land if you wanted to. Although she's not a queen, don't get it wrong. I'm just giving you an, an idea, a small little idea. And, well, in one of her uh, missions, which was to fight apparently the resistance, it kind of didn't work out too well, and she was left to die until a some sort of an abyssal lord or queen, which, by the way, if you don't know, if you go into her cards, eventually you're going to be able to, able to see some cards that will show this extra character right there, which, in my theory, it is the abyssal queen that we might end up seeing. I do think that this is also the person we see on Atlas's wall, and as you can see, that little crown on top is also what we see on um Cashpian's trailer so this is something to set up for the future letting us know that this character is indeed coming into the game you also see her here and maybe i believe in one more card i'm not sure maybe i'm just wrong maybe it's just those two cards i guess uh yeah very much likely doesn't matter either way basically things went wrong for her the abyssal queen or lord or whatever just offered her some help, gave her some abyssal powers, and turned her into a vampire. She's not an abyssal monster like Dredge. She's a, she's a vampire. And she's going to suck your... Yeah, so, and in order to also complete her looks, they didn't just give her abyssal power and immortality or whatever the hell she was given. A uh, long life, an unnatural long life, they also gave her a Hell's Rubik's Cube. Well, that's fun. So yeah, and her weapon, which, by the way, is pretty trash, um, does have that, um, does have that uh, similarity to a Rubik's Cube. She shoots out little pools of blood from her weapon, and now that we're talking about this, 
uh, let's get a bit more into her kit. Uh, oh yeah, just to finish up the lore, she is then called by Leon to try to revive Corvus because I guess the Leon pretty much just messed up Corvus a bit too much, uh, trying to uh, either get to the Abyssal Lords that Corvus unleashed or just to get the dagger that he has. And she doesn't want Karn to be pissed at her, Karn being the father of Corvus. So, there you go. So, uh, her main fire is basically a little cube that has four ammo and it shoots these pools of blood. You'll see that when you shoot walls and floors, you'll see those little pools of blood. Um, it doesn't do too much damage and when you go with the first talent that makes you heal more, it also makes the damage go down a bit. So, array for that. Um, I guess that Lilith is the only champion in the game that truly has to be nerfed when she heals more you know there's other champions that just can heal more and that's it you know no no counter to that talent but Lilith just had to have it so yeah you have that and yes she does have a very low ammo count you're probably thinking death hands death hands no calm down uh basically her right click is a little mark uh, this mark can only be placed at one person at a time can be placed on enemies or allies and this will help her because her HP, as you can see there, is 750, but then she has an extra part that brings her around to 3,500 or so of HP. And that HP is actually called the blood pool, blood portion of her HP, whatever. And that part cannot be healed. Other people cannot heal her. The only part that can be healed is the 750. And the only way to get that blood back is mostly with this blood X. Uh, so you place this mark on an ally, the longer it stays, it heals them more, and it also gives you more blood back, so you can continue to use all the other abilities. Or if you place it on an enemy, it will also give you blood back, but not as much, so it's always more beneficial to just place it on an ally. And, well, finally, you know, you will also be revealed to the enemy. Uh, you'll reveal him, and he will. you will be revealed to this enemy when you place it. On that person you can only place it one at a time you cannot replace it on the same person and well yeah here's an extra little thing that not a lot of people know if you shoot a person that has the enemy in this case that has that blood mark that blood X mark you will not consume ammo it will give you one ammo back for that one ammo that you just spent so it will refund the ammo that you just spent then her Q her swarm it's similar to Grok's totems it does damage and it heals. You place it like Grox Totems, but it does the same as the Gourd from Damba. Um, and it has a little charging bar. The longer you charge it, the better. I actually have a little trick for you because there's a huge bug with this ability. And I know how to actually counter it. So stick around for that. But you basically just place it like the Grox Totem. But you have to hold it longer to do more damage and more heals. It'll always cost the same thing. 700... Oh, oh 825 blood, sorry. So it's the most cost he the one the ability that costs the most out of your kit so having that blood x the mark always placed on an ally is essential for you to keep having blood back and just keep placing swarms all the time as you can see it doesn't have a lot of cooldown so it is actually pretty good but um it does have that initial charging time that kind of makes it more than two seconds if you think about it for a second but we'll get back to that so yeah tip for this high ground the higher you are to place it the better then you have her movement ability, which is basically just a little jump. But here's the thing, if you press it again when you're in the middle of the air, it will force her to go down and slam and deal a little bit of damage in an area. Which by some reason it says dealing damage in a small area, but it says that it's direct damage. Makes sense. Um, it will cost 350, this is a lot, you know, a lot less expensive than the swarm, so you can do it a bit more often. This will be good for you to reposition again and also get into high ground as much as possible. As for her ultimate um oh i almost forgot to say this if you shoot somebody who's inside of the swarm an enemy that's inside of the swarm it'll also give you one ammo back so if you have an enemy that you can mark you'll be able to get one ammo back if that enemy doesn't have the mark but it's standing inside of the circle it will also give you one ammo back so you can pretty much not even have to reload if you do it correctly death wings obviously 350 blood to cast you can use it a bit more often and finally her ultimate will basically make the entire map go all red for your enemies um, you will also reveal them only to you, all the entire enemy team. You will be able to, um, get a lot of blood back. It will actually regenerate over time, like 500 or so per second or so. And it will also, uh, increase your movement speed and jump height. And here's the thing that it doesn't say anywhere, but your cooldown of your death wings is actually cut in half for some reason. 
So when you use your ultimate, you can use your wings a lot faster, which is good, I guess. As for your allies, they will also have an effect that it's called the true pure lifesteal. Um, pure lifesteal is 35% if I'm not mistaken, and it cannot be cauterized. So, you know, those it, it counts as healing in a way, because they can just heal themselves, which is great. Now, um, there are a couple of tips here uh, that I wanted to discuss. But for those, we're gonna go into the shooting range to make it a lot better. So I'm gonna pause this and go into the shooting range, and I'll see you guys in a second. Alright, so here we are. We are on shooting range again. As I said, right click can be placed on allies. As you can see right there, it has a four second cooldown. I do have a card that resets the cooldown of my mark in case that person ends up dying. I'll show it right here to you guys really quick. This is the card. Sanguine Pact, three points, four points on it. It's gorgeous. You should definitely have it. And another one that I love as much as well is Blood Cannon to the max because then it will eat a portion of your base hp which is 750 but it will replace it with double of that same amount but for blood which means you can use your abilities a bit more as for the rest you can actually just go for whatever the hell you want i feel like overflowing delights is actually kind of okay but if you put this you want to have waning moon together because having a mark on an ally will then make it a little bit less expensive for the swarm which is almost pretty much the same thing that the card increases, the overflowing delights over there. So you'll be able to have a, a bigger radius, right? Nothing too much, but you'll be able to have that bigger radius without extra costs. As you can see there, my HP is going down. Little thing for people who don't know, um, if you are very, very low and, you know, there's literally no way to heal you, it will start regenerate on... By itself as you can see I am regenerating without having a mark it will stop at 2,000 uh, and from then on you just have to use the rest of your abilities to your advantage to get the blood back uh, kill to heal and life rip for some reason work on her on that blood portion of the HP and a thing that I found out that I don't know if this is intentional but if you mark an ally and that ally kills someone you get refounded 1,000 HP as well for some reason. I don't know why, but it does. Now that we're talking about the her healing portion and so on, I also want to show you how fast you can heal somebody. The mark will heal more the longer it stays. You can see there that it starts giving more heals in, as, as it goes. You can go all the way to almost like 600 or so. So it's very beneficial to put it on tanks, but it's also very beneficial to put it on targets with high mobility. So Drogos, Maeve, Seven, Vatus... Eevees, all of that, that it's really hard to get them to stand still. It will be beneficial to actually place a mark on them. And if they're about to run away from you, just place it initially, even if they don't need healing just yet. It has a 10 second duration, and the chances are you might actually save them as soon as they engage in a battle. So that's also pretty, pretty great. Um, there's also a bug, unfortunately, with this. Is that if I'm standing just high enough... Um, the swarm will not actually heal me. So the swarm is only good for healing people who are stationary on the floor. If they jump just a meter above, it will automatically no longer heal them. If you're trying to heal somebody on the second floor with it, it's not going to heal them. So, yeah. So this is why her wings are there for you to keep positioning them yourself a bit better with a low cooldown so you can just keep moving around and it's also good because it will make it extremely hard for people to track you down and get you um obviously you will go a little bit slow on the air but in case you need to go round, down really fast just press it again and get the hell out of there all right just go down all right um now i'm going to show you how much of of healing we can put out with the mark and the swarm together as you can see that is pretty damn fast now, there is a bug, however, that if you place a mark in immediately and you try to do the swarm straight away, the little charging bar won't be there. But I'm going to teach you how to fix it. Just right-click it, try to do the swarm, and as you can see here, it is... I have the placer, but I don't have the charging bar. This might be fixed soon, but the way to fix it is while you're holding it, do not let go of it, is left-click. So there you go. I just fixed Lilith. 
So yeah, so just so far we already have a couple of tips. I have here a loadout um, for a more aggressive healer because it has this card right there. If you have to mark an enemy, it will, every time you shoot it, it'll give you a portion of your max HP back, which is almost like life rip in a way. And at early game, that is extremely good. As you can see here, here these two cards are always there. Now, let's talk about her talents really quick. Maelstrom of Carnage, I'm gonna be straight up honest. It is not that good unless you're playing like Ice Mines of some crap. And even then, I still don't like it. Because like I said, the Swarm doesn't heal people who are a bit high up in the sky. And there's a lot of high mobility champions. The chances are you're not going to be able to heal them. I don't think this even heals properly behind walls for some reason. And so, as you can see, it's not that good. Now, if you want to go damage, I advise you to go with the last talent because you're basically piercing through enemies and so on. But that's not the pers or purpose of it. The purpose of it is that now you don't have the reduce the damage you do by 25% from the initial talent. And instead, you can just shoot normally, right? And use the Qs for damage. You heard it right. You can even go with this same loadout right here. If not, if you want just a high flank mobility kind of thing with Lilith, you can go with this one that I showed you right here. Just pause the video to go back and see it. But basically, you just go, place the mark on the enemies and the swarm. The swarm does massive damage. I'll show you how much damage it does right here with these three victors. Just look at that. The Q itself is massive. And having just the talent, this talent right here, it will actually turn down the damage by a lot. So, yeah, the, the last one is a bit better. As you can see here, it almost does nothing. So the benefit of the last talent is not because you can pierce through enemies. Because this is going to be extremely hard to pull off, by the way. It is going to be extremely hard for you to get people standing up in a line to do this extra damage. So my, my, my idea here is to be able to use the swarm a long range, as you can see here, and then just do that for damage gorgeous also if you are almost like half on your hp and you have to engage in an enemy you have no one else to place a mark and you're going to place a mark on an enemy place it but don't use your cues if you're very very low just try to use your mobility you know just try to go around and don't use your cues the moment you use your q you're going to reduce your hp by a lot the enemies are already gonna do damage to you and you might be dead this is how the the ultimate looks for the enemies by the way, up top, the entire map will be involved with that. And as you can see here, the jump is faster. So there you go. And you also get a lot of blood back. So now let's jump into a TDM and try to apply the things that I just showed you. Sorry if I don't show you a lot more tips. But in the future, I might do a lot more videos with her as well. So I'll, I'll teach you guys in that portion and those times um some more tips okay and if anything i knew that i find you'll be able to see them there as well now i'm gonna pause this obviously until we get into a match there's literally no point of you guys have to wait with me so i'll see you guys when the match starts now, here we are on a bis tdm we're gonna go with the aggro healer just because obviously it's a tdm and makes it a lot harder so i'll be able to get some blood back by just hitting my enemies we got two tanks for some reason and yeah like I said, the mark is extremely good. Uh, items I tend to go with Kronos and Numble. The reason why I go Kronos, and I know a lot of you will probably hate me for it, it is because then the the swarm, it will compensate me for that time that I have to hold this. Also, you cannot jump when you're doing the swarm, so that doesn't help either. But if you do have that bug, like this, you can jump. Well... That was an interesting death, I guess. All right, now our team is sticking together a bit more, not as much. Let's just try to get a mark here on our squishies here. Put a Q on Makoa. Okay, we got him dead by accident, sorry. Also, another thing that I actually did is I placed my my swarm on my shift. Um, for PC player, for console players, it'll be a bit harder. But the reason why I did that is because I then can just move left and right and so on um, a bit more without having the Q just locking me there from movement. Putting a mark on that Makoa, he needs it kind of now. Let's see if we can place a mark on this Ash. Unfortunately, she is dead. The reason why I have that card that resets the mark, as you can see here. I don't think we're going to be able to. Oh, we actually saved them. Let's go. 
Look at the space like Q right here. Get some mark on Ash. She's going all the way to the front. Place a Q right there. Place a mark on that one. Let's place some damage here. Sorry. Let's ult. Try to get a bit of lifesteal for my team. Because unfortunately, they are moving a lot. Let's get this ult charge here since I'm here. Let's ult again. I don't think I'm going to be able to save anyone here. Maybe the Makoa. There we go. Nope. He died. We got the silent bug going on right now. Also, the uh, weapon is currently doing knockback, but it will be gone soon enough. The speed is obviously for me to move around fast is n enough to get to my team. Let's just place this here. As you see here, the reset allowed me to switch my mark to someone else. Let's not place our cues too randomly. We got that emoji kill. Gorgeous. Let's see if we can save these two. And they, as you can see, the Kronos is giving us some value. Because I'm able to place my cues faster. And like I said, it will not be the best for everyone. Not everyone will agree with this. But it will compensate for the fact that I have to charge it. Right here, you see that I can place a cue faster. Also, I just got stunned and that for some reason allowed me to cue. We'll place that mark. Let's get the hell out of here. Too many people. Place a mark on Makoa. We got ult. Oh, okay. For some reason, I missed that mark. But because I have the reset, team is not sticking together too often. I was pretty sure I hit that shot. That's an interesting. So as you can see, if you get stunned, it will also put you on that state of the uh, placing the Q and not really fully charged. Sometimes it, it might be good just in case to like spam a Q right really quick. Like, right, just don't charge it at all. Because sometimes it has to be like that extra DPS will help you. I'm gonna get a hell out of here. Everybody's dying. We're still winning, so that's great. That bug is happening again. But like I said, the knockback will be removed soon enough. I might actually have to buy here Resilience. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, well. The game is over. So, in a way, this was a bit chaotic. I hope that in the future I'm going to be able to be doing, you know, these videos a bit faster. We're already in 20-something minutes. Uh, unfortunately, because, well, Loth is kind of complicated. But as you can see, I did pull out a good amount of healing here. Way more than the Fury on the enemy team, even though the Furia was placing, playing Cherish. The person is right in a way. Double tank TDM experience is kind of kind of a dick move. And not to mention half shell. Kind of kind of hate that talent, not going to lie. Um, Creepers and Beam School. <laughs> person in question is, is trying to blame me for it. You're just making a fool out of yourself. I'm literally playing solo recording this video right now, so whatever. But as I said, I know that a lot of people will not agree with my Kronos uh, pick for Lilith. But listen, uh, it will compensate a lot for the fact that you have to charge the swarm. And a siege environment is a bit calmer, but you still need to place those cues faster than you already can. Sorry about my phone. <laughs> well, that's that was not intentional. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I did help you. Let me know down in the comments below which champion you want to see next. And until then, have a wonderful time. Bye-bye, guys.